<laughs> oh my god, hola. Como estas, Tube Nation? So I definitely thought that I filmed an intro for this video, and I did, but I don't know if I just wasn't recording it, so I'm redoing the intro. And I was thinking about it. I was thinking about a video that I could do this week. I realized that I don't talk about guys with you guys. I haven't talked about my experience with men or like dating or like situationships that I've been in. I've just been having some like really weird experiences with guys that I really want to share because they are so ridiculous and I just want to feel connected with you guys and I want you guys to feel connected with me because these things happened to me and I just want to start telling you guys about it because like maybe you guys can relate maybe you guys have gone through similar things with guys and if the guys ever come across my videos whatever I'm a YouTuber, what do you expect? I tell stories and these stories are ridiculous and funny and I want you guys to hear them. And as I was reflecting on my year, because it's the end of the year, duh, we always just sit back and reflect. I was reflecting on all of like these weird, bizarre experiences that I had with men just this year alone. So yeah, this video is just gonna be me sitting, doing my makeup and gossiping with the girlies. And I'm gonna tell you guys about this guy that I met and all the ups and downs and like the weird experience of him visiting me <laughs> and that was all the way back in January so we're starting with January this is the first guy get some popcorn get a snack get a soda get some ganj get a drink do whatever just make sure that it's safe but before we get started we do have a sponsor so take it away Sarah our sponsor today is Scentbird <laughs> What? I talk about Scentbird all the time, but if you're new here or if you live under a rock, Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service. You get to choose a new designer fragrance every single month just for $17 with no surprises. I have been using Scentbird for so long and I just love them because I get to try out a new scent, try out a new aroma for myself, whatever mood I'm in, I pick the fragrance for how I'm feeling that day. You know what I mean? But I've said before that I've always wanted to have like a signature her Sarabasca fragrance and I've been looking for that one and I could never find it on my own. It was just kind of overwhelming. But because of Scentbird, I found my fragrance, y'all, and I get it every single time. I'll show you guys what fragrance it is in a second, but every single time I wear it, I get so many compliments, okay? People always ask me what I'm wearing. Even my Uber drivers, whenever I get in <laughs> Whenever I get into an Uber, they always ask me because they're like, I'm trying to find a scent for my wife. And I'm like, I got you, brother. And if you have no idea where to start or even what you want to smell like, you just head on over to their website and you take the fragrance recommendation quiz. And all you gotta do is just like take that little quiz and they'll tell you exactly what your vibe could be based on your preferences, previous purchases, and the questions that you answered in that quiz, they'll help you find it for you. It's like your little smell assistant. And they really, upped their packaging. It's so classy. Oh my God. So these are what the tubes look like. So you see those little locks up there? You twist it, it's unlocked, and then you get to spray it. Ooh. And then you just lock it right back up again. I'm gonna show you the ones that I got. This one is called Gold. This is my signature fragrance, okay, people? I have been wearing this for about a year now and I love it. It's very warm. It's very vanilla-y, it's very cozy. It just smells like a warm hug. And it smells like my mom's homemade snickerdoodle cookies and it just reminds me of home. Love this, this is my favorite, okay. And this is by Commodity gold by commodity and then we got this one this one is called hope it says it's an uplifting fragrance and honestly it really smells hopeful <laughs> it does smell really positive <laughs> that actually released serotonin in my brain i can't believe that this is a beautiful fragrance it's super light it's a little bit more floral and then we got this one and this one is called ignite by Good Habitat. This is a new one, but I really, really like this one. I'm trying to branch out, okay? This is nice. I feel like I just walked into a juicery and I'm smelling like fresh juice. I feel like that scene in Twilight, I think it's Breaking Bad part two. Is it Breaking Bad part two or one? <laughs> Breaking Bad? Oh my God. You know what I meant, Breaking Dawn. Not Breaking Bad. I think it's part one. 
where Bella and Edward are laying in that field of flowers. That's what this smells like to me. Maybe like an orange tree is near. I really like this one. And then last but not least, we have one of my personal favorites. This is called Sexual. Sexual. There's a little asterisk. Sexual Nori, Nora, Norir, Nor. Don't roast me. I can't pronunciate things. This is by Michael Germain, Mikael. It's not spelled how Michael's originally spelled, so I don't know. Michelle, I don't know. But this is one of my top 10 favorites when I'm feeling freaky. And you guys can do the math on what I mean by that. But <laughs> I just know this one's gonna pull. And it does, every time, every time. I get hit on so many times at the bars when I'm wearing this. I don't know what it is, I don't know what kind of freaky magical potion Mikkel put in this, but it works. And it's called sexual for a reason. It makes people go crazy, all right? And it makes me go crazy. And with each fragrance, you get a 30 day supply. So these will last you 30 days and then just test them out for 30 days before you commit to buying a full bottle. I also love that there's over 600 designer brands. They have perfumes and colognes and even unisex options. And just feel out which one suits you best. I love that. Make sure you're smelling great this holiday holiday season and click the link in my description and use my code BASKA for 55% off your first month at Semper. And that's only about $8 for your first month. What a bargain. And I have very exciting news for my Canadians. They're available in Canada too, baby. Let's go. Get on it, Canadians, get on it. Thank you so much Semper for sponsoring today's video and let's get into it. Okay, let's get into it, my God. Okay, let's take this shit back. Last year, all of 2021, I was in my healing phase. I was just living my best life, just being single for the first time since I was, what, 19? So I was just living it up. I wasn't looking for anything, right? I wanted to live my free spirit, Sagittarius rising lifestyle that I so deserve. And I was doing just that. <sighs> And then do you guys remember the video that I made last year around this time when I went to that music festival in Las Vegas? Oh God. And <laughs> I mentioned that I met this guy. We met during a Tame Impala show. I have a Tame Impala poster right there. I'm obsessed with Kevin Parker. And so I'm with my friends in the crowd and then they all went to get a drink before Tame Impala came out. And then once they came out, I was by myself. And then I bumped into this guy, literally just like shoulder checked each other. And then we looked at each other and we were like, whoa. At the same time, like we looked at each other up and down. And we were like, what the fuck? Since I was alone in the crowd and my friends weren't coming back, I was like, I need to dance with someone. Kevin Parker just came up on stage and I was like, I'm gonna dance with this guy. He's so fine. So danced with him, had a beautiful night with him. Oh my God. He let me get on his shoulders. Like it was a vibe, it was a moment. And then we like made out during the last song with like the confetti and shit. It was a vibe, right? And <laughs> after the concert was over, I got his number. We were like texting and shit. It turns out that he didn't live where I lived and he was a little bit younger than me, which is like fine. But he definitely looked so much older. I was like, what? How are you younger than me? I I genuinely thought he was like 28. But no, he was in fact a little bit younger than me, not drastic. I was still like, okay, this, this, this could, whatever. After that festival, I went home. We were just like texting here and there, nothing too serious. And it wasn't even like an everyday thing. I don't know anything about this person. I literally just grinded on him at a Tame Impala show and made out with him. And I was really open to the idea, but I wasn't really making it that serious in my mind because he didn't live near me and he has a bunch of shit going on in his life. But then I was like, but we had such a great connection. I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what to do with you. And I know he felt the same way about me too. He was just like, what do I do with her? It kind of fizzled out and I was like, okay, whatever. I'll probably never see him again. But we followed each other on everything. So I was like, okay. And then I had a work trip in his city. At that point, like we hadn't talked 
in a few months. I honestly kind of forgot. <laughs> I didn't forget about him, but I was just like, I was there for a work trip, whatever. And then he hit me up and then he was like, oh my God, you're here and you didn't tell me. And I was like, we haven't talked in literal months, but hi, yeah, I'm here. He took me out on a date. Okay, it wasn't really even a date. Like he didn't say that he wanted to take me on a date. He just came and picked me up at my hotel. Then we like went out. So I don't even know if that was a date. And it was so fun. Such a great time. Like I never even really like had a conversation with him ever. Not a lot of guys can handle me and he could and he was keeping up with me and like he was making me laugh, which is really hard. Cause like a lot of men do not make me laugh. And I usually like don't entertain guys that I like dance with at clubs and shit. Like I just like, oh, we like danced and made out. Huh, I'm never talking to you again. But this guy was different. We genuinely were just like on the same frequency when we went on this date. I don't even know if it was a date we went to this bar and he paid for my shit so i guess that that was a date and then we like danced at the club and it was so fun it got kind of weird though <laughs> because we were so similar in the way that we acted where everybody at the bar was just kind of staring at us like Everybody was just staring at us while we were dancing and just like talking and then they kept coming up to us being like How long have you guys been dating and we were like We this is literally the first time we've ever hung out and they're like no shut up We were both just kind of like uh it was flattering, but it was just like a lot after our little like date thing He drove me back to my hotel and then nothing happened after that. I didn't invite him inside I just wanted to keep it really chill. This is the first time we've ever had a conversation, you know I just don't do that. I'm just not the type of bitch to just be like no shame to anyone that does this I don't care what you do But like for me and my emotional well-being and like my heart. I'm just like that. That was fun. Um Bye. Bye. Like, what the fuck? I don't know you like that. You can't come into my hotel. Like, n I don't know you like that. I'm a tourist, guys. After that, like, I went back home to LA and like, we were like texting casually. I could just tell that we both kind of were like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> like, what just happened? He was like finishing school and shit. So he was really stressed and I was really stressed with like work and stuff. It just kind of fizzled out again. And I was so fine with that. I was like, yeah. We both need to figure life out. Like that was a cute little date or whatever the fuck that was, but let's figure life out right now. And like, we both don't need this. And then in January, he hit me up again and he was like, I want to see you. And I was like, okay, you can. And he was like on Christmas break. And since he was a student at the time, he couldn't just like freely come and see me. You know what I mean? I was like, are you sure? Like, you don't have to come and see me. Like, I don't even know what the hell we're doing. And he was like, no, I, I like really want to see you. And I was like, okay. And I was like, okay, January 12th, come to LA. Like, I don't know, I'll host you for a few days. <laughs> And you guys, I've never, ever, ever in a million fucking years would do this. A random man that I met twice? And the fact that I was even open to like have him stay in my home, my personal space. But there was just something about this guy. I'm gonna name him David, okay? David is so intriguing and I don't even know why. <laughs> I also just have hosting anxiety. I just like don't know what to do with people when they visit me. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So the fact that I was so open to it, I was like, okay. January 12th has arrived. And this is the day that he's supposed to drive in and see me. I don't know if it's actually January 12th. It was sometime in January, I don't fucking know. I realized that I have nothing prepared. Look in my fridge, I have nothing. I look in my pantry I'm, and I have nothing. I have no food. And I was kind of spiraling. I was like, oh shit, I gotta go to the grocery store. I was like, oh shit, I gotta clean my bathroom because he's staying for a few days. So he's gonna use my shower. I need to scrub that shit. And he was literally texting me all day being like, can't wait to come. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Nothing is prepared. I think that I was also kind of expecting him to back out last minute. I just genuinely could not imagine him actually being in my apartment. This man that I met twice. It was just so out of pocket where I was just like, no, he's gonna cancel and then it'll be chill. So that's why I waited so long to like do shit. But then when he was texting me that day being like, 
can't wait. And I'm like, oh shit, so you're like actually coming. Wow, okay. Because I was so stressed about my apartment, I hired a cleaner. Like a man is staying in my apartment for two days. This shit's gotta be cute and tight and you know, whatever. So then I go to the nail salon cause I needed to get some like fresh nails, you know? And then in the middle of getting my nails done, he texts me. I was expecting the worst. I was like, he's gonna cancel, he's gonna bail. Like I knew this would happen. He's like, yo, I'm like really trying to figure out how to do this. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, I just like, I'm just like trying to get the money to like come out there, like gas money and shit, you know? Cause like I said, he was a student at the time he was about to graduate but like as i'm getting my nails done i'm like texting with one hand i'm like it's fine you don't have to worry about it meanwhile there's like house cleaners at my apartment while i'm getting my nails done <laughs> I was like, it's okay. I know this is like really bad timing for you. You don't have to come. And also, not saying that I didn't want him to come. If he bailed, I would have been annoyed, but I would have been like, <sighs> okay. My avoidant attachment style was screaming and being like, okay, thank God. <laughs> I don't have to like figure out what the hell this connection is now because he's not going to be able to come. So I was like, cool, I can avoid this completely. But then he texted me and he was like, no, I'm going to figure it out. And I was like, okay. I just kind of didn't really believe it. I was like, he's not coming. And then 30 minutes goes by. I'm still at the nail salon. And then he texts me a picture of him sitting in, it looked like a doctor's office. <laughs> And it was him with his arm out and he was getting plasma drawn. He was selling his plasma for gas money. And when I saw that picture, I literally jerked away from my nail tech and I started howling at the moon. I was like, there's no fucking way. I was like, are you kidding me? I'm like, that's kind of hot. He's an entrepreneur. <laughs> He's gonna make it work, he's gonna make it happen. And I was like, oh my God, you're really selling plasma to come see me. He was like, yeah, like I'm coming. And I was like, okay, cool. Fast forward like two hours, he sold his plasma. <laughs> and then he texted me a picture of his maps and he was like, I'm on my way. And I was like, oh shit. Me and my roommate looked at each other. We were like, oh shit, he's like, we, wow, oh my God. Like he's actually coming. What the hell am I gonna do with this person? <laughs> What the hell am I gonna do? And then Christelle was like, you need to go to the store and get food. I was like, you're so correct. And so I bust my sweet little ass to Costco. I can cook. If I really put my mind to it, I can do it. I can follow a recipe, I can do it. But I'm not gonna cook for this man that I barely know. That's like wifey shit, you know? He's not my boyfriend. So I'm not gonna like cook for him. Sure, I wanna like impress him cause he's hot and like I have a crush on him. Sure, I'm not gonna like do that. So I went to Costco and I bought a bunch of like pre-made meals, you know, those like frozen meals. You can just microwave them. Fettuccine, I got those like tacos and shit. Cute little things that he could like put in the microwave. Cause I'm not gonna. My phone was literally at 1% and I go to the milk aisle and I'm like, oh shit, what kind of milk does he drink? So I was like, do I call him and ask him or do I just assume? Then I was like, I have 1% left. So I like called him in the milk aisle and I was like, hey, um, what kind of milk do you drink? <laughs> I could like hear that he was in a car drive. He was like, what? And I was like, I'm at Costco. What kind of milk do you like? <laughs> And then he said almond, and I was like, that's hot. That's the correct answer. So I, I literally was like, okay, hot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hung up the phone because I needed my shopping list. <laughs> I ran home, stocked the fridge, and then he comes over. Amazing energy. Amazing vibes. Wasn't awkward at all. Felt like no time has passed. And him and my roommate really got along too, so it was just like great energy, great vibes. And then we got drunk off of Hennessy. We made out. That was it. Like, I'm literally telling you guys, like, that was it. Because I don't know you. I don't know you like that. We can, like, make out. 
talk about our trauma and like have a good time but he was also just different for me i was like no you mean more to me than that like let's just like take this really slow and he was like yeah totally he really respected that boundary which i really appreciated because a lot of other guys i feel like would have gotten really annoyed by that and they would have been like well then why did i come all this way if like we're not gonna fuck you know what i mean with him he was just like no i so get that i don't mind i i literally came just to like hang out and I'm like, okay, period. Love that. So then I literally woke up the next morning and I looked at my phone and my mom is blowing my shit up. And it was kind of embarrassing. I was like, <laughs> sorry, my mom's a Capricorn. But then I actually took the time to read what she was saying. <laughs> instead of emotionally reacting to all these texts because she was texting me all morning being like dentist dentist at 1 30 dentist are you going to the dentist dentist hey you have a cleaning she would like exclamation point her texts so there would be more notifications if you don't go to this appointment i'm gonna freak the fuck out <laughs> it was so hard to get you this fucking appointment with your new insurance and I was like, oh my God, but I have a boy over and we're having fun. Like I can't just like go to the dentist. I like knew that I had to. And it would also give me some time to like escape him, not escape him, but like kind of like reflect on how I was feeling. <laughs> while he was over. I was like, hey David, I have to go to the dentist. This isn't an excuse by the way. Like look at these texts, like my mom's tripping. You can come if you want. Um, You're just gonna have to sit in the waiting room for super long. I've been stationary on my contour. I'm sorry, this is, this is just what happens when I talk and I do my makeup. I'm like fixated on one part of my face. I ended up just like telling him to stay in my apartment. <sighs> Cause I didn't want to have to like have him sit in the waiting room. At first he was like, no, I'll go. And I was like, you don't have to go. And he was like, okay, I can stay here. And then he was like, I'll make breakfast. Okay. My heart almost just like bursted. I was like, you don't have to make breakfast in my house, but I'm not opposed to it. But that's insane. Like you're my guest. I can make breakfast when I get back. And he was like, no, no, it's okay. Like, go to the dentist. You'll come back with breakfast. And I'm like, tea. And so then I go to the dentist. And as I'm driving there, I'm like, there's just this random hot man walking around my apartment. And Christelle was there too. So that's why I was like, cool with it. I didn't even know him that well, but I trusted that he wasn't gonna like go through my shit, you know? But then again, I also understand how that can sound really stupid and delusional for a lot of you guys. Cause you're like, you just let this man walk around your room. Like what if you had shit hiding? And I'm like, yeah, I have a lot of weird shit in my room that he could have gone through. But I genuinely just like, didn't think he would ever do that. And I really don't think he did because while I was at the dentist, I was literally sitting in my chair with this like dart in my mouth. So I look like this and my phone vibrates and it's him and he's just sitting on my balcony and he shows me his cup of coffee that he made. And I'm like, okay, cool. He's just chilling like I expected. Then I come back, he like made me breakfast. I was like, okay, cool. But now that we're like sober in my living room eating breakfast together, <laughs> We're like not drunk and messy and making out. We only had like an hour and a half to kill before I had to start getting ready for this comedy show that we were going to. So I'm like, what the fuck are we gonna do for an hour? I was like, do you wanna like watch The Bachelor? <laughs> like, I didn't watch the new episode last night. And he was like, I like The Bachelor. And I was like, cool. So we like went to my room and we sat and watched The Bachelor and he was being such a good sport and we were like roasting all the contestants. We were like making fun of it together. He like got my vibe because I'm not watching The Bachelor being like, I'm making fun of everybody. I'm roasting everybody and he was on that shit too. So it was like chill or he was into it. It was, it was fine. We went to this comedy show. It was really funny. I was like, do you want to go out? Like, what do you want to do? And he was like, I don't care. And I was like, I mean, it's really late. It was like pretty fucking late. It was like almost midnight. Do you want to just like, <laughs> you guys, mm. You guys are gonna punch me in the face. You guys are going to punch me in the face. I was like, do you wanna play Life is Strange? 
do you want to play Life is Strange? And he goes, Life is what? And I go, Life is Strange. He goes, Life is Strange. And I'm like, Life is Strange. But there is a game called Life is Strange where you can play this cute boy who navigates the world after losing his father and he's homeless and he's in the wilderness and he has a little brother named Daniel who I hate but I feel like that would be fun. I feel like you would like it. And he was like, I'm into it. He was so into it. He was going with my flow, wasn't being weird or like outwardly uncomfortable. He's also a Leo, so I don't know if he was just putting on a front and he actually like hated it. But actually he was playing it and he was having a good time. We were like making decisions together. It was like fun. He was making way better decisions than I did. He was actually being really nice to Daniel. So that was hard for me to sit through and watch. But then I also wanted him to play Life is Strange so I could like tell test his morals. I feel like that's a really good way to test someone in their true character. Even though like I had the worst outcome in that game, but we're not gonna talk about it. It's still fun to watch other people play it and see what they would choose. And he was being so respectful towards Daniel, just like so nice. And I was literally sitting next to him being like, ew, fuck Daniel. And he was like, that's my little bro, like stop. And I was like, you're correct. Like, okay. And then we fell asleep. And then, okay, so the one thing about David, he is a very active person. And I just knew, oh shit. But since I knew he was like an active person, I was like, okay, we have to do something active and fun on his last day here. And I was like, what am I good at? <laughs> I literally had to sit down with myself and be like, what physical activity could I do with him? And then it dawned on me. I was like, I'm good at tennis. I'm really good at volleyball and soccer, but we can't just like play volleyball one-on-one. -on -one. We could like pepper, like bump set, hit it, but I doubt he knows how to do that. And soccer, what are we gonna do? Dribble the ball around a field? Like, no. So I felt like tennis. <laughs> Me overthinking everything. I was like, tennis is perfect. I grew up playing that with my dad. So like, I'm pretty good at tennis. So I thought. And so when I suggested tennis, he was like, oh, yeah, I have two rackets in my trunk. This man just had rackets. I'm like, perfect, perfect. That is Fantastic news because that is the only physical activity that I can think of that we can do right now Besides going on a hike, but like bitch. I love going on a hike But I want to like be competitive with you even though I can get really competitive and I did get really competitive I'll get into that. I'm also gonna do my eyeliner off camera because I cannot do that while talking so just like Okay, so anyways, and we had a genuine game of tennis. I'm not even gonna lie. That was the thing that I was most nervous about. Like more than him just showing up into my apartment, I was way more nervous about doing a physical activity with this person. I'm not Serena Williams over here. Like I'm not that fucking good. So I was kind of nervous. I'm like, how good are you? Cause you had tennis rackets in your trunk. So obviously you play a lot. He mentioned that he was on the tennis team. I'm like, okay, awesome. <laughs> I wasn't on the tennis team. I just played tennis with my dad on the weekends. But I'm still a very competitive person. It's the Taurus in me, I will not back down. I won't back down, I'm gonna win. Even if you're a six foot three man who was on the tennis team, I'm gonna win, so. That's funny. So you guys, we're playing tennis back and forth. I'm keeping up, right? I'm like actually hitting the balls back over the net for the most part, like 65% of the time. He was better than me, but not that much better. Like we were on the same level, but he was just like a little bit better than me. His serves were crazy. And they were so crazy, in fact, that, um, <laughs> 
Y'all, just imagine me on this tennis court with this like beautiful man. Like nothing is going to go wrong. <laughs> Even though the entire day you were thinking that something was gonna go wrong and this is why you don't do physical activities with men because you'll embarrass yourself somehow, huh? But it won't happen this time because everything's going so smoothly and you're actually keeping up, huh? And then it happened. Sorry, I'm painting my eyelash right now. It happened, y'all. The worst case scenario. My personal nightmare. So I'm like on the other side of the net. I'm like ready. I'm like, serve it. I got this. I got my racket. I'm like, let's go. He overhand serves that shit. You know, like in Wii Tennis, like Wii Sports, when you do like a power serve, that was the energy. He did a fucking power serve for the first time ever. Once his net made contact with the ball and it started flying through the air, I was like, I'm fucked. It's going way too fast for me to react. I froze. Cause I was like, I don't, it's, The ball came straight to my face. Straight to my face. <laughs> it literally knocked me over on my ass. It was like someone literally punched me in the face. I fell over on my ass, screamed. Um, I just remember as the ball hit me and I was going down, I'm like, it's over, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Like, how do I come back from this? Are you, he just hit me in the face with a tennis ball. Are you fucking kidding me? Am I really tumbling down? This is all in my head as I'm going down. I'm like, am I really falling down right now? Am I really like about to cry? Cause I hurt so bad. <laughs> nope. And then I'm like, Sarah, you're not going to cry. <laughs> That's insane. Shake it off somehow but it hurt so bad it was literally a power serve and he didn't do it on purpose obviously we're playing tennis i think i tried to do like a backhand i missed the backhand and it just nailed me in the face um so yeah i definitely fell over i was laying there and i was like this <laughs> like this really really god I was like trying to laugh it off, being like, oh, I'm okay. But I deeply, <laughs> in my core, wanted to cry <laughs> and call my mommy. I just remember like looking over and he was running towards me and he like jumped over the net. <sighs> and he like helped me up and I was like, I'm fine. Like my Taurus stubborn competitive in me was like, I'm fine, chill, chill. I'm cool. I got this. <laughs> My face is like pulsating. I'm like, it's, it's cool. And I was like, no, it's fine. Just serve it again. Let's go. Let's keep the game going. What are we doing? Why are we wasting time? Chop, chop. We got a game to play. And he was so nice. He like apologized a bunch, but I was like, my ego, dude. Oh, I was already like losing. And I got decked in the face by a hot guy. And I could tell like after that, he was like going really easy on me. I was like, it's fine. You can like be normal. Stop being weird. You don't have to like go easy on me just because that happened. <laughs> In the back of my mind, I'm like, that's really nice that he's going easy on me. <laughs> I'm so confusing. The tennis match was tragic. And not only did that happen, but the entire time I was huffing and puffing, bitch. I was so out of shape. So out of shape. And I just forgot like how intense tennis can be, especially like when you're kind of good, like me and him were kind of good. So we were like running around. It was like short sprints. I like forgot about that. And I was literally fucking dying, dude. I was sweating everywhere, like sweating in my butt crack, like sweating literally everywhere. My face was so red and like pulsating. I just remember looking across the net and I'm like, you good? Like. You tired? Like, you like want to take a break? Like, this is exactly what he said to me. He was like, no, this is like, it's like a light jog for me. This is chill. And I was like, yeah, a light jog. Totally a light jog. 
Right. I'm on a light jog. Whatever. I did okay, despite the circumstances. So then he left, he went back to his city where he's from. I don't know why I just stopped filming after that, but I don't have like an ending to this video. So I wanna give you guys kind of like what happened after all of that went down. Basically, he went home and I was just so confused. I was like, what, what was that? Do I honestly care what that was? I did because he was so fun. We had a great time. But at the same time, like he was going through a lot in his life. I was going through a lot in, in my life. We didn't live near each other. So I kind of just had to like sit back and logically look at the situation and be like, okay, that was cute. That was a funny time, but... And I don't know, I guess I could have been healthy and communicative after he left. And I could have been like, so like, what? What was that? But I also just wanted to give him space because he wasn't texting me a lot and he wasn't like calling me a lot. It was kind of annoying, but I was just like, okay. So I gave him space, whatever. And I was like, I'm just gonna keep doing me. And then he would just sporadically text me or call me. I would respond and like reply and it was like fine, but it was never really emotional or like deep or anything. Not even, it was like kind of flirty, but like what the hell, like it just felt like I was, on FaceTime with a friend, you know? But I still had like a little crush on him, whatever. But I could just also tell that he was so emotionally unavailable and I kind of was too. So it was just weird all around. Like, I feel like we both constantly are like, we do want to talk, but not all the time. When we do talk, it's always great. And he lived in Vegas at the time. I was literally in Vegas all year like i was constantly in vegas and it was just strange like i would always reach out to him and say that i was like in vegas but we were never able to hang out like he was always like busy or it was just it just never really worked out so i genuinely like hadn't seen him in person again since he came and stayed with me so that was kind of weird because i was in vegas all the time i don't really know he didn't really make an effort to like want to see me so i was i just took that face value and i was like Okay, whatever, like I don't, I don't understand you. And I feel like the way that we communicate is really not compatible. <laughs> it just wasn't, it just wasn't really going anywhere, you know? I just kind of had to accept that. It was really hard for me to accept that because he still would FaceTime me all the time and like sporadically text me and stuff. So I was like, what? are we doing are we just friends because i do like kind of like you what the fuck like why are you playing with me i don't think he meant to like play with me but i also just don't think he knew what he wanted either it was just very weird so then this company reached out to me and they asked me if i wanted to go see usher for free usher had a residency in vegas as like my last attempt to like see what the hell is going on i hit him up and i was like yo do you want to go see usher with me in in August like that would be so fun and he was like oh my god yeah let's do it and I was like okay cool mind you I asked him in like July I haven't seen this man in person since January so I was like this is gonna be the next time that I see you and I was excited but I was also in the back of my head kind of expecting him to bail literally you guys the Usher show was like August 26th and on August 1st he FaceTimes me and tells me that he can't go to the show anymore because he just got a new job in a different city. So he was moving away, like hours away from Vegas. And I was like, oh, okay, like when are you moving? And he's like, I'm literally moving next week. And I was like, what? I was like, oh my God, well, congratulations, but damn. That sucks, like, but in the back of my head, I knew he was gonna bail. And then basically, I don't, know why i did this i just really wanted to like let him know how i felt it was really uncomfortable because i i don't do this i never first of all i never like like a guy and when i do i would never like tell them that <laughs> i just wouldn't but for some reason like when he told me he was moving away i was like okay well i really have nothing to lose i'm just so curious to see what he says even though I know he's moving away and I know that this just isn't going to work whatsoever. Like there's no possible way we could make this work right now. So I told him on FaceTime, I was so uncomfortable, you guys. I was so uncomfortable telling this man that I liked him. I started crying because I was so uncomfortable and I'm just like, ew. 
why am I doing this? But I knew that like if I didn't do it, he wasn't gonna do it. And then we would still just be like, what, what are we doing? Do we like each other? Are we like trying to build something emotional and deep? Or is this just like light and friendly? So I did tell him that I liked him. It was a very confusing conversation because he was just like, I mean, I like you too, but I'm like moving. And I'm like, no, I get that. Like, I'm not asking for anything. I'm just, I just wanted to like let you know how I feel. And at that time, I was also like in a very emotional space. I was grieving somebody that I loved at the time too. So my emotions were just crazy. And then he tells me that he's moving far away. Can everyone stop leaving? We didn't even really end that conversation with clarity either. Like it kind of was just like, I kind of like you too, but I'm so emotionally unavailable and like, I'm not ready for anything. And I was like, that's fine. I'm not either. I'm just, I just wanted to tell you that. So I thought the conversation was okay. And then I woke up the next day and I had so much anxiety. I woke up the next day being like, why the fuck did I do that? Like there was no point to tell him that I liked him when I knew what it was. I don't know. But also, I don't regret it because I was so anxious. I texted him because he didn't text me that day and I was like, what? So I texted him, which I shouldn't have done. I really regret this. I really regret this text. But I was just so anxious because I was like, he didn't text me today after I like bared my soul. I feel really uncomfortable. I don't know why I apologized either, but I apologized. I was like, sorry for getting emotional last night. I don't know why I apologized. Like I'm allowed to have emotions, but I was like, sorry, I got emotional last night. Like, thank you for receiving. I don't even know what I said, but it was just like, thank you for that conversation. Can't wait to see what you do, you know, for your, like your new career or whatever. It was something nice, but I was also just hoping that he would say anything just so I could like fucking relax. Like if he responded to that, I would have been like, okay, I can like detach now and like fuck off. But he didn't respond to that. He didn't fucking respond to it. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? A week goes by, nothing. I'm like, what? ew, I'm like, ugh, my ego was just like, ew, I cannot believe. I cried to this man, told him that I liked him. When he didn't text me, like that's not happening anymore. That was a lesson that I needed to learn. Like, I'm so done like putting myself out there for men that won't even reciprocate the energy, you know? And like, won't even have the decency to say anything to make me feel better. Like, just completely ghosting me after that was just so, I was just like, this is so typical. I was like, this is so typical. Like, of course he did this. And this is why I was afraid to tell him that I liked him because I was like, oh, this is gonna freak him out. And he's gonna like run away and shut down. And that's exactly what he did. And I was like, okay. And I had to kind of accept the fact that I was never gonna hear from him ever again. And I was like, okay, whatever. Bye bye. And then August 26th happens, which is the Usher show in Vegas. And so I invite Ashlyn and we go see Usher and I'm like posting about it. I'm having the time of my life, not even thinking about David. I'm just like, ugh, I'm having a great time with my girlie. The next day after the show, I get a text from him. After an entire month of just silence, I get a text from him the day after the Usher show. And it basically was like, hey Sarah, I'm so sorry that I didn't respond to your text. I just like really needed some time to think. And I just really needed time to like sit with how I feel about our connection. Honestly, I see you as a sister. He's like, I have so much love for you, but I see you as a sister. A sister. <laughs> this man just sister zoned me. I never heard of that. I've never been sister zoned. I've been friend zoned. Friend zoned plenty. Sister zoned. Oh my God. When I read that, I threw my phone and Ashlyn was like, what? And I was like, I just got sister zoned. Sister zoned? I was like, I was thinking, I'm like, so you're into incest then? Because i pretty sure whenever we were together, you were all over me. I was like, sister zoned, sister zoned. 
that means that you don't want to fuck me. But your actions months ago and every time we were together speak otherwise? I, oh my God, I was spiraling. I was like, what the fuck? So disrespectful. So rude. That's what you say after an entire month of like not responding to me? You text me and say you're like a sister to me? Ugh. Oh, I was so pissed. If he said you were like a, f you're like a friend to me, I would be like, totally. You're like a friend to me. We can just be friends. But the fact that he said sister? No man has ever said that to me. I was flabbergasted, bitch. I was like, I'm not even gonna respond. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. I'm like, bye bye. I sat with that for like a week and I was going over in my head like, what the hell? Like, so you want me in your life as a sister? I'm not your sister. I can't believe that I misread that connection so bad where he looked at me as a sister. I'm like, we had so much chemistry. And when we're together, we had like so much physical chemistry too. I'm, I was like, am I just so stupid? Like, I don't, I can't believe that. But then I was thinking about it and I was like thinking about him and his life situation and the fact that he's never been in a relationship before. So now that I'm like, okay, this guy does not know how to express how he feels and also very emotionally unavailable. He's got a lot going on. I respect him for like texting me at all and not just ghosting me forever. Like he did give me closure in a sense. So I was thankful for that genuinely, even though that was the bare minimum. Like I was just like, okay, at least I have something to work with even though sister zoned what Ugh. at least it was something so then i texted him back a week later after processing all this i wasn't gonna text him back at all but i was just like he's going through something because i'm so dope like i'm sorry i am fantastic you fumbled that's crazy Okay, 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 okay. I was like, I'll, I'll text him back. So I just, all I said was like, thank you for telling me how you felt. That's all I wanted. Thank you for the clarity. I wish you well. Bye-bye. And then he responded immediately after that. And he was like, can we still be friends? What? I thought we were sisters. I thought we were sisters. I thought we were sisters. So now we're friends? What? What? This is what I'm saying, you guys. He is so confusing. I should have just, like, not... I should have just, like, whatever. But, I don't know. There's just something about him. He reminds me a lot of me. I'm not making excuses for his behavior and, like, the way that he went about this. But I'm just like, dude, whatever. I'm just gonna, like, detach myself from this. Because I'm, I'm your sister. So, I responded and I was like, sure. We can be friends. Whatever that entails. Oh, one FaceTime call every two months? Like, okay. Because <laughs> that's like literally all he can give. When a lot of you guys, I know you're, you're like, Sarah, you're too nice. You should have blocked him. You're too nice. But I'm like, ugh, I'm like so over it at this point. I have like no animosity. I'm not like upset with him for friend zoning. Me. I'm not like, oh, block. I just wish he would have told me that earlier. But also, he didn't know how he felt earlier. But still, I'm just like, okay. So then, a few weeks goes by. The story's almost over. A few weeks goes by, and then he FaceTimes me out of the blue. And I'm literally in bed. I don't have clothes on, because I sleep naked. And he's FaceTiming me. I'm like, do I want to entertain this right now? But I was honestly just kind of bored. <laughs> And so I answered it and I had my covers on. So like, I wasn't just like naked, like, hey, I, I was like covered. And I was like, hey, how's the mountains? Cause he's like living in the mountains somewhere. I don't even fucking know. And he was just like, I just wanted to like check in and say hi and like wanted to know how you were doing. And I'm like, I'm good. 
how's the mountains? And he would like, he was like telling me stories about it. And I was like, okay. I like moved and my covers almost like showed my entire titty. I was like, oh shit, sorry, my bad. My titty almost popped out. That would be so gross, right? Cause I'm like your sister. <laughs> like that would be so disgusting seeing your sisters like, ew, sorry. Oh my God. And he was like, oh shit. And I was like, yeah. Let's unpack that. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Now that we're face to face, let's talk about it. So we talked about it. I told him how hurtful that was because I don't care anymore. I don't give a fuck about like what he thinks about me at this point. I'm just like, he needs to know that that was just like whack and like, I don't know, hurtful. And this man, he literally was like, oh my God, Sarah, that I wanted to talk to you about that. Like I've been thinking about that text for the past few weeks and I've been like going over in my head being like, I shouldn't have worded it like that. Like I'm so bad with like wording how I feel and expressing how I feel. And he's like, I don't see you as a sister. I don't know why I said that. I think that you just remind me a lot of my sister. And his sister is also a Taurus. So I guess we have like similar vibes, but I was like, and he's a Leo and my sister's a Leo. And I was like, you remind me of my sister, but I didn't call you a fucking sister. The fuck? That's so different. Like if me and your sister have like a lot of the same energy, maybe that is weird for you, but that's your issue. Like what? You're making it weird. What the f what and he was like no yeah that was like so weird for me to say i don't look at you as a sister i look at you like as a really good friend and i just really want to like be really good friends with you and like build a friendship since we don't even really know each other that much you could have just said that you could have just said that oh my god men I was like, you could have just said that. He was like, I know, oh my God. I, And I'm like, oh, this is exhausting. And then he apologized. And it was a very sincere, genuine apology. And he is a genuine person. I think he has like a beautiful soul, but he just does not know how to communicate how he feels, I think. And I think that me coming into his life was just such a, like a whirlwind where he just didn't know what to do about it. And honestly, same, but just the way he went about it was so crazy. But he genuinely apologized. He took accountability. I forgave him. And and that was kind of it. <laughs> that was kind of it. We're like friends now. It took me a second to like really transition my thought process with him of like, okay, this is just my friend. Like it took me a while. So what I did was I changed his ringtone to, hey brother. I also changed his contact name to David Lil Bro. So anytime he texts me or calls me, I'm just like, it's training my brain to be like, this is my friend. Friends. Um, but yeah, then I also had to set some boundaries too. I'm like, if we're going to be friends, then we're going to be friends. Okay. If we hang out or see each other ever, friends. He was like, ah. And I was like, what? And he was like, Ugh, okay, I get that. And I was like, you're the one that, like, what? I'm telling you guys, mental gymnastics. Like, okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it with this guy. I learned a lot about myself. I kind of learned about what I expect when I'm talking to a guy, like communication wise, like someone who's on my same communication style, someone that doesn't just like leave me confused and someone that just kind of knows what they want. He taught me a lot and we're like still friends. Like we FaceTime here and there. So like now that I kind of detached myself from the potential of it being more, I'm like so clear and like calm when we do talk and just like catch each other up on life. And like, it's like really chill and casual. And the only reason why I'm like keeping him around in my life as a friend, because I do enjoy him. I do enjoy his outlooks on life. We're very similar. He's just like a good friend. So, and he, he is a good person. That's why I was like entertaining him for the entire year. But then once I got sister zone, I was like, bitch, you're crazy. So yeah, 
we're friends now so weird i don't know it's fine it took me a second but yeah if if there's something to learn from this situation if there's like some advice i could give you take what's happening at face value okay if you keep getting left on red or talks to you sporadically and never addresses how he feels and you have to be the one that doesn't it's just not it's not a thing it's not a thing learn from me okay like you should not have to like bend your back and do the most just for a guy to like tell you what he's thinking and how he's feeling and that's what i learned so awesome oh and for the astrology girlies this will give you some great context he's a virgo venus No offense to bitches with Virgo Venuses, but my God, you guys are so picky. You don't know what you want. And I'm a Taurus Venus. That's my biggest flex ever. I'm such a lover. I'm just like, I love everybody. And especially if you're like a really hot, cool guy, like, fuck yeah. Oh my God, his Virgo Venus. Like we're obviously compatible in that, but Virgo Venuses in general, they're tough. They're tough to crack. If you're dealing with a Virgo Venus, good luck. They're so confusing and you might get sister zoned. All right, that's all. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I love you. Bye.